Last time I started to show you the analysis that I use personally around trends and trading ranges using the RVOL relative volume indicator. This time I look at a new example to reiterate some of the logic that I use, but also consider a new use case, that of using volume assessment to assess with breakout strategies. Stay tuned. As I said last time, there is no one right way to assess relative volume. I'm showing you the techniques that I tend to use for my own analysis, but really you need to undertake your own analysis and research to determine what will work for you. And specifically, which techniques will help you with the kind of trading strategies that you personally trade. But this time I'm going to use a new example and although I'll cover some of the same themes, I'll also go into more detail but also look specifically at how I believe you can turn probabilities more in your favour around breakout strategies. Let's take a look. So last time I used an example using the FTSE 100 stock index. This time we're going to turn our attention to a forex currency pair, and in this particular case, Euro dollar. So again, I've hidden the right hand side of the chart here so that we can simulate making trading decisions just with the information that's available right now, without any of that future data influencing our thinking. So what we see in the price action is a short uptrend followed by what might be a pullback to that uptrend, or alternatively might be a reversal point. We don't yet know. And so if you're at this particular point looking at the chart, there's a decision point. Which way will the price action go? Well, we can get certain clues by looking at the relative volume and by breaking this up in terms of the pullback compared to the volume for the previous impulse wave will allow us to perform that assessment. Now, how I interpret this data is that the volume during the pullback is fairly consistent with the volume of the previous impulse. And what that says to me is that there's a lot of trader commitment to this downswing in price. Now, quite often, if this was just a pullback as part of a bigger trend, you often see the volume decrease during the pullback, but we're not seeing that here. And so my assessment is that this is more likely to actually be a reversal and the price action might follow the red arrow as opposed to the green arrow. And if we reveal some more of the price action, that's exactly what happens. Now, as I said last time, price action moves in a way where it rarely just goes in a straight line. In any trend that you observe on a price chart, you will always see the impulse waves broken up by pullbacks. And this is a characteristic that you'll see on price charts for almost any asset class, be that forex currency pairs, stocks, stock indices, or commodities. And so in line with that, what we next see is a pullback. But of course, once again, we have that decision point. Is it just a pullback to a larger downtrend, or could this be the start of a reversal? And once more, what we need to do is to separate out the volume data for this most recent price move and compare it to what happened before. And what we see here is that the volume is decreasing significantly during this upswing. And so this is the kind of behavior I was talking about just a moment ago. And when we see this, it's much more indicative of pullback behavior. So what this again says to me is that the probabilities now have turned more in favor of the price following the red arrow as opposed to the green arrow but pay particular attention to my terminology there. 
it's turned the probabilities. It is not saying it's a certainty that it's going to follow the red arrow. As with many indications within trading, there is no black and white. It's all about probabilities. And it's about ensuring you're on the right side of those probabilities more often than you're on the wrong side. So in this case, we've seen that falling volume, which is an indication that the commitment to this upswing is waning. And true enough, we see that the price does come back down. But take a look at what's now happening to the volume. Because we're looking at a relative volume indicator here, the red bars indicate that the volume is less than it is on average for this particular asset at this particular time of day. Now, just like we saw last time, when volume decreases to these below average levels, it's often an indication that the balance of buyers and sellers is becoming more equal. There's basically indecision in the markets. Traders are much less sure now of whether they should be going long or short. And so they're holding back out of the market. And it's that that means the volume has decreased. Now, when this happens, often that indecisiveness causes a trading range to develop. And by revealing what happened next, we can see that's exactly what occurred. And again, look at the relative volume throughout this trading range. It remains low and we don't see any green bars at all. Not until this next price move. Now what we see here is a potential breakout. But as I'm sure you're aware, there's a concept of fool's breakouts where the breakout doesn't succeed and instead the price gets sucked back down into that trading range following the direction of the red arrow here. However, of course, the converse of that is that the breakout does succeed and follows the track of the green arrow. But how do we know which it will be in this instance? Well, again, we don't know with any certainty but what we can do is look to the volume information to get some clues. So we split up the previous price action and this new price action that we're interested in, the potential breakout, and we compare the volume between them. And looking at this volume that was occurring during the potential breakout, we can see that we've got our first green bars out of the last 20 or 30. And what this means is that trading activity is beginning to increase. And because of the fact that the volume is above average here, this says to me there's a lot of commitment to this particular move. And when there's a lot of commitment to a move, it's more likely or the probabilities are turning in the favour of a continuation of that move. In other words, following the track of the green arrow. So the breakout is slightly more likely to be successful now. And looking at what happened next, indeed that was the case. Next, in line with normal price action behaviour, we get a small pullback to this particular price move. And again, if we're faced with that question, is this a pullback and we're going to see a continuation of the trend? Or is it the start of a reversal? We can again look to the relative volume information for clues. So we split up our volume into the price action of the most recent move compared to that that happened before. And look at the volume here. It's decreasing from above average volume to normal average volume levels. Now, it's that decrease in the relative volume that says that commitment to this move is beginning to decrease itself. And when that happens, it turns the probabilities more in favor of a reversal here so that the price changes direction and follows the green arrow. And again, looking at what happened to the price action, the price went up. 
So once more, I must stress that this was an idealized example that I specifically chose in order to illustrate the points I'm trying to make around the assessment. But volume data won't always be quite this reliable. But as long as you approach it with the right mindset, with a view to it helping you assess the probabilities and to turn those probabilities therefore more in your favor, is what this type of assessment is all about. And for me, any information that helps to do that is valuable information. Now in the next episode, I'm going to cover a number of special cases and exceptions to the basic principles that we've looked at. And these are around volume spikes, exhaustion of fifth wave trends, and below average volume. So please do subscribe to the Darwin X channel if you haven't already, and please do remember to give me a like. But now until next time, trade safe.